definitely better but at the same time a tank is a tank and you guys know my opinion if you play a tank you're a fool because you're believing in your teammate and we don't believe in power friendship here in this channel we're not believing in power friendship it doesn't it, it doesn't exist power friendship doesn't exist in world Earth. you will get into down and if you play a tank you're a fool because people will run you down and you can be 10-0 on a tank but you will still lose the game because your adc is 0-10 i'm talking about uh experience here ptsd PTSD! Ban those ADC players running me down! Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Darkwaker here, and in today's video, let's discuss the new tier list for World of Patch Notes 4.1a. As you guys can see, last Thursday we had the update. We had a few changes for Amumu, Jin, Nautilus, Nunu, Pi, Grammars, Varus, Warwick, Zeri. And biggest change is definitely that Sterox Gauge is now usable. Sterox Gauge is now usable on ranged champions, including Argot, Grace, um, some ADCs that might use it like Vayne and Corky, and uh, Stuart uh, also using Sterox Gauge on Lucian, so that's going to be interesting. So if you guys want to find out and know my personal opinion about how the meta shifted or how the tier list updated in comparison to last time, definitely stay tuned. I'm leaving you guys timestamps. Um, I appreciate if you guys watch it completely to listen to my in-depth explanation. But yeah, it's just an orientation for you guys. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. Make sure to leave a like and uh, watch the video completely if you guys are uh, interested. So let's get started with Baron Lane. So for Baron Lane, it's still the same uh, pretty much. Um, minus the fact that I'm moving Algot up, but everyone else is pretty much the same in comparison to last time because there were no major changes at all, or they didn't get nerfed or buffed, etc. Gwen is still one of the best AP hyper carries, one of the strongest late game uh, monsters, plus she has true damage, which is very good into the tank meter. Aatrox is still very good, super tanky, insane amount of sustain and crowd control. Garon very easy to play, super strong and uh, after the last buff from last patch she is super super strong with Hullbreaker, Twin Guard, Black Cleaver or whatever you wanna buy. He's just so tanky and he does a lot of damage. Um, what do I have a star? Star usually means that the champion got uh, buffed by the way. Buffed or nerfed or I adjusted them. So Fiora is still one of the best split pushers, really good against tanks as well, and a great duelist. Camille, very similar like Fiora, great duelist, good split pusher, and great catch potential with the ultimate and team fights. Camille is better in team fights, while Fiora is better as a split pusher. Jax is like the late game monster, uh, also very very strong split pusher with Hullbreaker right now. Then we have Wukong, he is insane in team fights and he has tons of sustain. Gregor, whether you're pay playing him poke or tank, he is uh, very good and versatile either way. Then Jace, one of the strongest liners, great poke damage and does tons of damage. Renekton, uh, super complete champion, has mobility, great duelist, great in team fights, tanky, crowd control, etc. Akali, assassination monster, especially in lower ranks, Akali is absolutely broken. But even in high low, when you have mastered this champion, she can be very good in team fights. In the one versus one, she's strong, and also in team fights, she's very strong. Malphite. Malphite is insanely good in team fight and can hold himself pretty well in the laning phase. Uh, he might get outskated in the late game against some split pushers, but overall he's still very, very strong. Same applies for Shen, who has the global ultimate to join team fights. Now Argot, um, I think this champion is just so, so tanky, does a lot of damage and provides a lot of utility in team fights as well. Very strong laning phase on top of that. So I think he is very good with Sarah. Like, if Death Dance would work on him as well, he would be broken. Like, if you could run Black Cleaver. Sterox Gage, Death Dance Twin Guard or something, he would be so strong. I mean, he can use Death Dance, but it's not as efficient because he's a ranged champion. But if you could get like the full efficiency from Death Dance, he would be so strong. He would, he would be very similar to like a Wukong. Now Riven. Um... Wait, I was thinking about Darius, right? I remember I was thinking about Darius this meta. Yeah, actually, I'm moving Darius up 
I forgot to move him up. I was thinking about it last time already. Because Darius is very good against tanks because he has true damage. Especially since there are so many tanky compositions right now. Darius is the perfect counter against those tank compositions. Because his ultimate does true damage. And he can stack up very good his passive against melee champions. Uh, since we're kind of moving away from a poke, poke kite meter. And we have more like hard engaged tank meter. I think Darius is a great counter pick in those situations. Sometimes maybe he's not the greatest pick, but a lot of times he's now way better than he used to be. So that's why I'm putting him S plus now. Riven high mobility burst damage, set good in team fights. Uh, Cyan super tanky, good spell pusher, good in team fights. Aurelia hyper uh, skill stealing uh, can be very good at snowboarding the game. Yone a late game monster, good duelist as well, and great uh, playmaking potential with the ultimate. And so yeah, in the late game, he does tons of damage. Dr. Mundo, super, super tanky. Uh, honestly, does a lot of damage, considering that uh, he is a tank. So, uh, solid S tier, in my opinion. Now, Singed. Singed in the early game is maybe uh, not the greatest pick, but once he is getting scaling, his team fighting is very good. He has a lot of pick, off, uh, pick up potential and uh, with his uh, third ability and the second ability he can deny people and then he does so much damage and becomes so tanky once he has like three or four items pantheon is in the early game a, su a super dominant laner he wants to snowball he wants to use the ultimate to snowball even more but in the mid game he will fall off Akshan, one of the strongest laners in the game, especially in the Baron lane. He counters a lot of matchups, but at the same time he's also vulnerable because he's a ranged champion. But in the right hands he can definitely be pretty good dominating the lane, then rotating and trying to snowball even further. But I think in the mid lane he does the job a little bit better because it's easier for him to rotate and snowball with the lead he's getting in the laning phase. Now we have Cannon. Cannon is in the early game pretty strong and also good in team fights. Uh, problem is he's squishy and he's getting outscaled in the one versus one later on. Yasuo, on the other hand, has a lot of bad matchups. He's in the early game not the strongest, but he can be very good in the late game and also into the right team setup. Now we have Kasadin, who is in the early game also not that strong, but later on, I would say in the late game, obviously, Kasadin becomes a hyper carry monster. So once he has four items, the game is pretty much over. So um, you want to deny this guy. If you don't deny this guy, you have a big problemo, okay? Diana in the Baron lane, maybe not the greatest pick, but overall still a super solid assassin who is great in teamfights and can hold the lane decently. Timo very strong and oppressive in the early game. Uh, it's a typical lame bully that wants to snowball and get the lead. And then in the late game, he can be very obnoxious with his guerrilla playstyle where he's just jumping out, uh, poking you down. And then he has the ultimate uh, to cover the map, to deny any entry points into the objective team fights or even just uh, brush traps or ambushes he was very good when you mastered this guerrilla playstyle just jumping out poking jumping out poking back back and forth etc Z, a high skill healing champion that might struggle against a few bruisers but overall in the right hands he can be pretty good at snowballing the game can be good at split pusher as well and uh, kind of rely on winning the uh, winning by skill winning by skill is the motto when you're playing Z in the baron lane while we got buffed, the sustain is even better right now, but in my opinion, there are only a few matchups where you want to play him because there are so many bad matchups or uh, in general, he is also not that good in teamfights. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking in some matchups, he can be pretty good because of his insane sustain now, but overall, uh, A tier. Grace, uh, two scaling, I would say. He can be good into some matchups, but overall, I think other champions do his job better. And he needs a lot of time for him to come online. And with coming online, I mean that he gets to a point where he has enough items that he actually does damage and becomes a threat uh, as a split pusher or even in team fights. Turnemeyer has a similar problem that he is pretty weak in the early game and um, his team fight is kind of tricky that you might get kited and it's hard to, to chase people when there's no crowd control and they nerf the second ability as well so slowing is even less effective than beforehand but his ultimate can be good in the one versus one so tournament definitely has potential to win some matchups um nasus too scaling in my opinion and too weak against a lot of uh, matchups especially in the early game 
Olaf, on the other hand, is a champion that is very reliant on snowboarding and is a kind of draft reliant pick where you want to pick him into heavy crowd control team comps or very tanky team comps. But at the same time, you still need to win the early game because otherwise you won't be useful at all as an Olaf barrel lane. Um, because I just feel like other champions are just way stronger than Olaf a lot of times in the one versus one. Thrash Baron Lane, a kind of cheesy pick to bully some melee champions, can be pretty fun to play, I guess, and uh, works decently, to be fair, especially with the new tank items. Nautilus, similar that he can hold the lane pretty decently, and he has some utility value in teamfights, and obviously he's a tank. Um, now, Vayne and Lucian are very similar to Akshan, that they are lane bullies that can dominate against melee champions pretty well, but at the same time, they are pretty vulnerable to ganks, uh, from the enemy jungler. Next one, Kale. Too scaling, too vulnerable, too weak. She needs too much time to come online and be useful. I don't like Kale in the Baron lane at all. If you're not a player, I think she's way better in the Baron lane. But yeah, give me a second. I'm gonna drink something and we are gonna hop right into the jungle list. Yeah, but yeah, you can obviously always leave feedback down below about each part of the Baron lane tier list if you guys would suggest something else but remember it's my personal opinion you guys can have your own your own personal opinion obviously as well let's move on to jungle um this is not in order by the way because before someone someone uh, say oh no it's the best or what no it's not the best but they they are not in order so uh for jungle nothing major change besides two champions a, I moved up Argot because he is so strong. If you saw my last video, you can tell that uh, he is so strong in the jungle right now with Sterox Gage. He can super tanky, great ganking potential, and he does a lot of damage as well. And I moved Lilia down after playing a few times. I feel like she is just too slow paced in this game. Same for Morgan, actually. I feel like they, they are a little bit too slow paced, and I don't like that because if you're teammates are bad you won't be allowed to farm up and i think that's the main issue why i'm moving them down so olaf is one of the best hyper carries that can ignore crowd control and has true damage wukong insane sustain super tanky insane utility value with the ultimate in team fights diana uh one shot team fight assassin goddess aatrox uh tanky sustain monster gregor uh, gregors uh ap one shot monster shivana Becomes super tanky, hyper carry, does a lot of damage, is super tanky as well. Kha'Zix and Lee Sin, um, kind of tricky. I feel like you need really, you need to be really, really good to make them work correctly. Especially in lower ranks, I think they are still very broken. But in higher ranks, you're facing a lot of tanks right now, so um, it's uh, it's getting harder to make them work perfectly, and you need good uh, skill to make them work but at the same time when they're snowballing they are so good at snowballing the game because they are just one-shotting you they are just have so much mobility and the ganking power is just so strong same for Evelyn who is just a ganking machine and becomes a one-shotting monster now Ramos Ramos got buffed in my opinion the adjustment is definitely a buff they nerf the late game damage but at the same time they allow him to move at 100 percent speed while using the second ability so he's getting less kited while using the second ability so that's gonna make ramus definitely better but at the same time a tank is a tank and you guys know my opinion if you play a tank you're a fool because you're believing in your teammate and we don't believe in power friendship here in this channel we're not believing in power friendship it doesn't it, it doesn't exist power friendship doesn't exist in world Earth. you will get into down and if you play a tank you're a fool because people will run you down and you can be 10-0 on a tank but you will still lose the game because your adc is 0-10 i'm talking about uh experience here ptsd ptsd ban those adc players running me down okay Let's move on. I talked about Morgana and Lydia already. I feel like they are a little bit too scaling, but they are still obviously very strong uh, AP champions in the late game. Once they have three items, they are super, super strong. And since we're talking about scaling AP champions, where is Echo here? Echo, Fizz, very similar reasoning. Or Gwen as well. They're all like uh, in the same 
um, a bracket where I would say in the early game they are not that strong but once they have three items they become late game monsters and they just start uh, snowboarding the game and one-shotting people. This great assassin when like I said hyper carry against tanks uh, and even against squishies you just one-shot them. Echo same that you can just one-shot people once he has like three items. Nunu got slightly buffed, uh, great utility value, great ta super tanky and great ganking ability. Nautilus got slightly nerfed, his jungle clear is slightly weaker and his damage on the third ability as well. But at the same time his jungle clear speed was way too good beforehand, he's super tanky and he does a lot of damage. Mundo, tanky, does a lot of damage. Amumu got nerfed, still very good though. Uh, with the tank items, does a lot of damage and is super tanky as well. Jarvan, great ganking uh, potential in the early game, great playmaker and super tanky in team fights, plus provides good crowd control. But at the same time, remember a tank is a tank! A tank is a tank! Same for Shen, a tank is a tank. Yes, you have the sexy tone. Yes, you have the ultimate. But if your ADC is a fool, then you're just playing yourself. Don't let yourself get played. Kane, um, I think Red Kane is pretty good. You can also run Blue Kane if they are squishy. Um, overall, uh, great assassin with high mobility. Yone is very similar to the AP champions that he's in the early game, maybe not the strongest, but once he has like three items, he's snowballing uh, super, super hard. Oh, I just forgot the cam. Mm, I just uh, I just remember the cam thing, my bad. Okay, let's move on to where were we, Darius? Yeah, Darius. Um, overall, he's pretty underrated in the jungle. He does a, his jungle clear is very, very good thanks to the bleeding onto the monsters. He has true damage as well. His third ability is good for ganking. Might get kited against some composition, so you, be, you need to be mindful when you're picking him. But overall, a very solid pick. Riven, high mobility, burst damage, super tanky as well. Um, since since Shao, great bruiser, super solid overall. Same for Vi, she's also super solid. Has great ganking potential, but she's not the typical hyper carry in my opinion. Aurelia can be hyper carry, but she's very situational in uh, terms of when to play her, and she has high skill healing as well. Jace overall strong pick, does a lot of damage. Fiora can also be very strong against melee champions since she has two damage and is very good uh, in uh, early skirmishes plus, uh, plus at snowballing the game. Pike jungle got slightly nerfed that his jungle clear speed is weaker right now but I think overall he's still very good uh, at snowballing the game since he's like a uh, mini version of Lee Sin. Like I know Vex put uh, Pike S plus in the last patch so uh, I guess he is now S, a solid S tier still. Akshan in the jungle, honestly not that bad, Does has good ganking potential, does a lot of damage as well. Um, Camille, kinda slow pace, but good ganking potential with the ultimate. Pantheon, good at snowballing the game and ganking left and right, but in the late game he falls off. Renekton, oh, um, overall pretty solid. Um, tanky, does decent amount of damage, has a stun as well. Uh, Rengar, I feel like Rengar is very hit and miss, either you're popping off or you are completely useless. Zed also high skill ceiling, but you can definitely make him work as an assassin uh, for dives, like his diving potential is pretty good. Um, next one, Tournament, very slow paced in the early game. Warwick, I really don't like Warwick honestly. Some people are swearing, wow Warwick is so good, but no, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I, I think his ganking potential is okay. His ultimate is pretty long cooldown, by the way. Like, why would you play Warwick when you can just play Camille? Like, if you want the same ganking potential on a lower cooldown with more mobility and easier to play the, and more damage, then Camille seems like the better pick. Or even Vi. Vi, press ultimate, pretty simple. Jax in the early game, two scaling. Oh, whoa, 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 I forgot something. Still, Grace, 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 Grace. His early game is very slow paced though. Ah, uh, A+. Plus. Let's call him A+, plus or something. I think A+. Plus. I forgot to move him with Starox Gage. A+. Plus. His early, I played him like uh, four times or something. In my opinion, he is pretty strong. Once he has three items. Three items! Wow, he's a sexy beast. But beforehand, he is very slow paced. Very slow paced. A plus, just because it's late game can, uh, can be so good, um, especially with the sketch, he's way more tankier and he can be pretty good against those melee champions now. Master, he 
uh, coin flip, hit a hit and miss, Kale, mm, two scaling. <laughs> but I see so many people are playing Kale jungle right now, by the way. Let's move on to mid lane, in my opinion. Pike, obviously, still broken in the mid lane. Uh, insane, high mobility, roaming monster, playmaking machine. Zoe, too much poking damage. Corky, um, especially with the tank build right now, is super strong with the package. Does so much damage and um, has he just has so much value in teamfights with the package. I always said it beforehand especially with the new build right now makes it even easier to pull him off in team fights yasuo a late game monster does so much damage high skill ceiling though kasadin late game monster akali uh, as an assassin in team fights is just so broken then we have vex is also a very strong assassin with great crowd control um with the ultimate he can pick off people very easily then we have ari also high mobility playmaking assassin diana very strong assassin in team fights uh katarina one reset and you just wipe them all uh, it's just one of the most broken snowboarding uh, champions, especially in lower ranks. Karma is a great poking machine plus utility value. Then we have Yone, who is also super strong in team fights. Uh, the only downside is that his early game is maybe not the strongest, but once you have like three items, he becomes one of the strongest uh, champions in the game. Aurelia is a great assassin, especially as a duelist in the one vs one in the early game. She can make or win a lot of lanes and then snowboard the game plus in team fights when she's snowboarding she's super super strong she has a lot of damage and she has a lot of mobility plus she has a lot of sustain on top of that Singe is a really strong playmaker right now in the mid game especially uh, in the middle lane especially because it's way easier to lane for him than in the baron lane uh, plus you have better roaming and playmaking potential from the mid lane and uh, it's easier for you to farm up now Jace, Jace is a strong lane molly with good po uh, poke potential. Gregor, a solid um, AP poking champion. Galio, a solid AP tank champion with a lot of utility. Akshan, very strong as um, yeah, very strong in the laning phase, and then he can ro or rotate a lot. I was debating if I might put him in S plus there because I see so many strong uh, Akshan challenger players where I'm like, wow. They're always dominating the lane, then they're pushing in the wave and they're always rotating. Akshan is such a good champion at roaming and snowboarding the game. Fizz, in the early game, he's not the strongest, but once he has three items, he becomes a very, very strong assassin. Then we have Oriana and Zix that are super solid poking utility mages that are good in teamfights. But I feel like they don't have the greatest snowballing potential and they really need to stall to get those... Uh, to the 3-4 item power spike where you have someone who's tanking for you and you're just poking the opponent down over and over in teamfights. That, like I said, a great assassin in the 1 vs 1, great at snowboarding the game. Then we have Twisted Fate who uh, can snowboard the game and dominate the map with his macro, with the global ultimate to gank left and right. We have Lucian, high mobility burst damage. Um, Fiora, great duelist as well and great at skirmish uh, skirmishes in the early game. And then when she snowballs, she's just um, destroying everyone with her true damage. Then Garen, he's super tanky, does a lot of damage. Uh, very good against a lot of champions. Pantheon, like I said already, in the early game Pantheon is uh, very very strong, especially against a lot of squishy champions. But if you fall behind in the early game, you are useless. And if you're not winning the game by minute 12 or something, you're falling off completely and you become a stun bot. That's what people... <laughs> I played a few times Pantheon, I was so strong and people were like, nice stun bot. <laughs> because in the late game, I just became useless. Because you just don't do that much damage anymore in the late game. Vega, uh, pretty slow paced in the early game, very weak in the early game. But in the late game, he can be a utility uh, burst damage monster. Very similar to Echo, who's weak in the early game, but in the late game strong. Annie, also in the early game pretty weak, bad Roma, but can be good in teamfights. Morgana can be good in teamfights, but is weak in the early game. Brand can be solid in teamfights with his poking damage and the percentage damage he has with a Leandri. But, uh, I guess he's pretty easy to kill. A lack of mobility and bad Roma. Aurelian Soul, on the other hand, it's kind of iffy. Sometimes... 
he has some bad matchups where he can't roam and he's hard to play and in some matchups he can be very good at, ro or at roaming to the bot lane and try to gank them plus he can be good in teamfights as well cannon great in teamfights uh, but overall not that strong in the early game in the mid lane Lux I, I think she's a solid poking champion um I think she has a lot of hard matchups plus her roaming potential is not that good especially against assassins why do I have misfortune A? oh was it AP misfortune? I think I'm trolling people <laughs> let's remove that honestly let's remove it Seraphine I think she has the same struggles that I mentioned that she's very weak in the early game she loses a lot of matchups she has a good ultimate in teamfights though uh, but she's a bad roamer overall no star by the way that was from last one kale i think in the mid lane she has an easier time to farm up but at the same time she is too scaling still like she really needs so many items so much gold and so much experience before she's coming online i think her place is just too slow paced for a game like world drift let's move on to dragon lane so for dragon lane we have some nice changes because we have now the tank ADC abusing meta. Uh, champions like Vayne and Corky are building um, Twin Guard. Plus now they can also build Starox Gage. So that provides them with even more shielding and HP. So they have a lot of damage and they're still tanky. So basically tank Vayne plus tank Corky are a thing right now that are super super strong. Doing tons of damage and still being tanky. Like the moment they have Twin Guard, it's actually so hard to kill them. And as a, when they're snowballing, it's just so unfair to play against them. Varus AP got nerfed, but it's still very broken in my opinion. Does tons of damage in this meta. Zeri got slightly nerfed, but it's still a very strong hyper carry. Lucian, uh, extremely strong in the early game. High mobility burst damage. Esriel, very strong in the late game. High mobility poking damage. Samira is the ADC of Katarina. The Katarina of ADCs. Okay, now we have it. Tristana, late game hyper carry monster. Kaiser, overall super strong uh, at every stage of the game. Saya, solid overall, but not as strong as the others. Jinx, weaker version of um, Tristana, basically, because she's weaker in the early game than in a Tristana. Draven, very snowball reliant champion, very strong in the early game, but kind of lacks the mobility, and he really needs to snowball and has high skill ceiling. Jin got slightly buffed, but I think it doesn't matter because the biggest problem is more like his early game is strong, but his mid and late game is not strong enough against those tanks right now that he can kill them. Caitlyn over super solid uh, ADC with long range. Misfortune, strong in the early game, decent in teamfights with the ultimate, but I feel like her damage falls off in comparison to other ADCs, plus she lacks mobility in comparison. Ash has a lot of utility value with her slow and her ultimate for playmaking but i feel like she lacks the damage as a hyper carry to kill tanks karma zix oriana and lux are great utility poking mages um overall solid but i think they are more or better in competitive setups um because i i think against those tanky champions that you have right now in the meta you want the hyper carries that can actually kill the tanks Brand Morgana are, are pretty much weaker versions of the other mages um, because either they are weak in the yeah, pretty, much, pretty much they are weak in the early game and um, I guess they lack range in comparison like Oriana 6 outrange Brand easily so it's easier for them to poke than a Brand and he also lacks mobility I mean the uh, I mean Karma has uh, a lot of mobility mm, yeah Senna ADC is really not that good I think the support senna is way better because she can get stacks easier and she's definitely not the typical hyper carry like if you play senna adc you really are not the hyper carry okay let's move on to supports so for supports nothing changed in my opinion pretty much nothing changed i added a new champion though into this um it's gonna be amumu support by the way so for broken champions we have karma uh, poking utility monster yumi is oh I had a discussion if I should put Lulu into S+, by the way. Someone said I should put her S+, and I was like, I ban Lulu a lot of times. 
I do ban Lulu a lot of times because she can buff someone into a state where the ADC becomes unplayable. It's harder to deal with a Lulu Vayne, for example, or Lulu Jinx, Lulu Tristana, than any tanky... Maybe. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Maybe S+, plus? between S and S+, plus, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Yes or no? Yumi, like I said, hyper buffer. The ADC or the hyper carry uh, in the enemy team just becomes a monster. Pike, you're uh, roaming got. Roaming playmaking got. Lulu... Very similar to Yumi. I'm not sure if it's... I'm not sure if I put her to broken. She is very, very annoying to deal with. Vayne Lulu. Vayne... Um, I mean, Vayne Lulu. Jinx Lulu. Olaf Lulu. Shivana Lulu. Riven Lulu. Um, Zary Lulu. Stuff like that is nightmare in the late game. And then we have the playmaking support that you guys already know. I mean, Thresh, Ragas, Nautilus, Elisa, Rakan, Galio. They are very strong uh, roaming supports that are tanky with a lot of playmaking and crowd control. Pretty much summarized. Lux, poking support that does a lot of damage. Very similar to uh, Akama, but with less utility, I guess. Jenna, great enchanter, great peeler in general, and good Roma to make some plays happen. Nami, uh, great peeler. Especially with the bubble and the ultimate, she has a lot of playmaking potential. Ash with the ultimate, a, lo a lot of utility and playmaking potential. Soraka provides a lot of utility, especially if you have frontline on the tank meta. She can make pretty much the frontline unkillable with her cons uh, consistent healing. Senna support, um, good utility, good damage overall. Then we have Leona, Braum, set that are weaker versions of the other playmaking support. Um, Sona... Uh, Seraphine, Morgana are pretty weak in the early game, but they can come online in the mid and late game and get useful with the ultimate and team fights, I guess. Amumu, Malfoy, very similar that they're weak in the early game, but their team fighting can be good. Like a good Malfoy ultimate or good Amumu ultimate can be pretty good. So Amumu has double stun plus the ultimate. And Blitzcrank is a hit and miss champion. Some are good, some are bad. Um, people don't know how to hook. That's why I'm putting him C tier. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and write on your feedback down below in the comments. I see you guys next time. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.